we got to play the opening 20 minutes or so of the new Avengers game, and we have to say, after feeling distinctly lukewarm over its E3 debut, we were impressed with this closer look. The first 20 minutes is pretty straightforward, it basically flings you between heroes as they engage in a battle on the Golden Gate Bridge. You essentially try out each Avengers moveset and are thrown into a boss battle with Black Widow vs Taskmaster at the end. Ultimately, the helicarrier goes down in flames with Captain America inside and the Avengers lose. After such destruction and loss of life, heroes are outlawed and the Avengers are disbanded and scattered to the winds. That was where our hands-on session ended, however, in a briefing given by Crystal Dynamics afterwards, we got to hear a little bit more about how the game will progress from there. According to the developers, after the Golden Gate Bridge, the game moves away from tutorials and quick time events and the world opens up, offering more expansive spaces, more choices and increased difficulties. It's up to you to reassemble, get the team back together and save the world. Here's what we learned about exactly how you'll do that. After the Avengers are forced to call it quits, Advanced Idea Mechanics rises up to take their place. This organization will be familiar to comic book fans, though it featured in the excellent Marvel Spider-Man PS4 game last year and a version of it appeared in the MCU in Iron Man 3. It's basically a super shady network of supervillains that works to overthrow the governments of the world via science and advanced weaponry. Its inclusion in this game opens the doors for exploring a lot of villains non-comic book readers might not be familiar with. AIM has gained power in a post-Avengers world by claiming that science, not superheroes, will save the world, and has steadily gained power by mobilizing an AI force to protect the public from other superpowered individuals. But, says Crystal Dynamics, if left unchecked, AIM's pursuit of a technocratic utopia would unleash the greatest threat Earth has ever known. Unfortunately, the Avengers are a little demoralized, hence the iffy haircuts of their E3 reveal. Tony Stark doesn't have his fortune anymore. The guy who usually had all the answers suddenly has none. Bruce Banner isn't sure whether the Avengers really wear heroes or villains, and this guilt and shame means he's built up a prison inside himself. Banner shrinks away from the world as the Hulk and loses the will to become Bruce again. Black Widow feels responsible for Cap's fate and goes back to her lone wolf lifestyle. And Thor, thinking he's let everyone down, leaves Mjolnir by Cap's memorial and goes off seeking a simpler, more humble life serving the people of Midgard. Basically, it's a big old pity party and all your favorite superheroes are invited. Oh, and spoiler, since our presentation went on to talk about costumes and abilities for Cap, we're going to go ahead and assume that he doesn't stay dead. He's just doing the good old Cap thing and making a noble sacrifice before showing up later and saving the day. Hopefully with a beard again. One of the most interesting lines from the presentation though was that this game is not just about saving the world. A lot of superhero games are about saving the world. This is a game about saving the Avengers. This is about finding that humanity behind the heroes. About saying you're not only rebuilding the team, you're rebuilding the individuals and bringing them back to where they need to be to save the Earth again. Hearing Crystal Dynamics say all this reminded us of the mindset behind Insomniac's take on Marvel's Spider-Man, which was refreshingly focused as much on Peter Parker and the relationships and struggles in his life as it was on the amazing Spider-Man. So once you've got the team back together, or at least once you decide to get the team back together, apparently Avengers will place your base of operations on a reclaimed helicarrier. At the very center of this is your war table where you'll view and accept missions to either advance the story or have some fun. Missions are split into two types, hero missions and war zone missions. Hero missions are single player, where you'll take control of a predetermined hero and advance the plot in the main campaign. Completing these will open up the next hero missions and potentially some new war zone missions as well. Completing these will open up the next hero missions and potentially some new war zone missions as well. Since hero missions are designed with specific heroes in mind, they'll be tailored to those heroes' specific set of skills. War zone missions, on the other hand, are solo or co-op, available to up to four players at a time. 
and these can be played by any hero or heroes in your roster at any time once unlocked. These missions cover large areas set all around the world, and taking part grants you resources to earn, harder enemies to battle, and, apparently, secrets to discover. Because while there are lots of sort of less pressing objectives and activities to carry out, either on your own or in co-op, Warzone missions will also contain unique narrative content that enhances, rather than advances, the overall story. So they aren't absolutely necessary to complete, but they add a little extra something for fans or for players who just want to spend more time beating the snot out of some bad guys. Whether you're playing a hero mission or a war zone mission, however, all missions drive the narrative forward, and the more you play, the more hotspots and further missions open up around the globe. Your hero's progress is shared between war zone missions and hero missions. So if you're playing as Hulk, for example, as you're leveling him up, his XP from both types of missions count towards his overall progress. The War Table mission structure is the interface players will use to find one another in online co-op, according to Crystal Dynamics. And the studio is committed to keeping it alive and thriving, adding more regions and stories post-launch in the, quote, years to come. The presentation we attended also went into a little bit of detail about how players can customize the appearance of their individual Avengers with outfits. We got a sneak peek at some of Iron Man's potential looks, including his original Sin armor, we saw Thor's Lord of Asgard outfit, Hulk's pinstripe suit, and Captain America's scale armor. Crystal Dynamics did note that outfits are purely cosmetic, meaning they won't limit how you play or upgrade your hero. The developer separated things out so you can look however you want to look with outfits, but change your playstyle via gear and skill trees. The studio also confirmed that some outfits can be earned in-game, accompanying certain missions, objectives and story threads, so as you go through the campaign you'll unlock new outfits, but other special outfits you'll be able to buy from the marketplace, confirming the existence of microtransactions. So whereas outfits change heroes purely on a cosmetic level, as you play hero and warzone missions you will find and collect gear. Gear is specific equipable parts per hero and ranges in rarity from common and uncommon all the way through rare, epic and legendary and beyond. The rarer the gear, the better perks and quirks attached to it, which will make heroes more efficient fighters. The example we were given is Iron Man's reactor coil. Equipping a legendary purple coil you just picked up might grant Iron Man a boost to his damage or strengthen his resistance against certain damage types. There are gear sets too, so equipping a full Stark Industries set would grant you a set bonus or synergy further to the perks found on each individual item. The right gear in the right situation will help you with specific enemies, says Crystal Dynamics. When you go up against the Abomination or a rematch with Taskmaster, you'll need to have the right gear to hand to give yourself the best fighting chance. You'll gain new gear by completing missions, challenges and other objectives and other extremely rare bits of gear can only be unlocked by completing the toughest challenges in the post-end game. Now, further to gear, another way you can change how your heroes fight is by customizing their skill trees. Each hero has their own unique skill tree and skill set, and this will change what moves and combos are available to them in combat. Some moves they can unlock come from the comics, others are brand new. As an example, Iron Man starts the game fighting with repulsors, but lasers and rockets are other options players can spend skill points on and switch between those weapons on the D-pad on the fly. You might lock on and deal lots of damage from afar with rockets, use lasers for melee kills and repulsors for ranged combat. In addition, all heroes have a sort of ultimate super move called heroics. Tony Stark has the Unibeam on his chest, Hulk has a thunderclap that damages and stuns all enemies in front of him. These powers can also be upgraded with skill points. Basically, all this is to say Crystal Dynamics are promising a pretty deep and involved system that allows players to personalize their Avengers team to some extent. To mix things up with both aerial and ground combat, and allow for a flexible combat system that suits multiple playstyles, and also people playing together in co-op with those multiple playstyles. 
The studio wouldn't talk too much about multiplayer and how co-op, matchmaking and levels will all work together, but it did promise more news later on down the line and say that there would be a beta, which PlayStation users would get access to first, that would be available sometime before the game launches in May 2020. And that's about as much as we learned. Apart from the fact that Crystal Dynamics is super keen to stress that this game has nothing to do with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the studio wouldn't really talk about the MCU as a whole. It stresses that this is an original story, collaborated on with Marvel from the beginning to create this version of the Avengers through the Crystal Dynamics lens. Head of studio at Crystal Dynamics, Scott Amos, says that the developer has been working with Marvel on this for years and that this game is what's next for the Avengers. Looking at our studio and theirs, Amos said, one of the things we love to do is tell epic stories about iconic heroes. That's something that we did with Lara Croft back in 2013. We reimagined her, looked at an iconic hero with a new modern twist. So what Crystal Dynamics did for Lara Croft in their recently completed trilogy is what the developer is now looking to do with the Avengers. Marvel and Crystal Dynamics work together to look back over the last 80 or so years of comic book history and potential material and collaborated to figure out what fans might want to see from this game. Crystal Dynamics also says that Marvel pushed from the beginning for the developer to find new stories to tell with the heroes, find new personality traits to explore, and new looks to show off. Now, while the absence of any MCU crossover might be a bummer to some fans, the good news is that it could mean the game isn't beholden to the same licensing issues that the films are. The films have to tiptoe around the fact that they don't have access to the rights for X-Men, for example. But according to Amos, Marvel are still figuring out what this game universe can use and will help Crystal Dynamics guide that vision going forward. So that's a lot of information to take in, but it did leave us feeling like we understood Marvel's Avengers a lot better than we did after its official announce. It sounds a lot more involved and open-ended than we were expecting, and that's definitely a good thing. Will you be keeping an ear out for more info? Let us know if you have any other burning questions in the comments, and stay subscribed to Eurogamer for more super heroic videos going forward. Check out one of the videos on screen now, why not? But if not, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye.